sometimes I watch wrestling and I think to myself, why do I watch this? And I've had that feeling watching Raw and SmackDown more than I want to lately. And I've been missing ROH, admittedly. Really enjoyed ROH. So I got the WWE Network. Why? Every now and then I get it back. Within a couple of months, it may lose its luster and, and I end up canceling it again because that's that happens regularly. But tonight I watched NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. I don't know what it is about Brooklyn, but it suits WWE's product and it suits NXT to a T. When, when I talk about wrestling and what I like about wrestling, what I saw tonight on, on that NXT event was everything. Uh, it, it had the unpredictability. Good guys win, bad guys win. It had the emotion. The crowd was really into it. There wasn't a single match the crowd was dead for. Which is why watching SummerSlam tomorrow will be tough. Because this is an event that that's how it's supposed to work. You're supposed to be in every match. So let's review it. The Undisputed Era retained the tag titles over Mustache Mountain. The most unfortunately named tag team, I think, in history. And and honestly, the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, send him to the main roster and, and make them the new shield. But Four Horsemen style. I, I really look at that group and I see a Four Horsemen there. You've got your tag champs, you've got your, your, your mouthpiece, and you've got the worker as well. So whether it's O'Reilly that ends up being the worker, it, it, you know, and whoever, it doesn't matter which combination of the four, and that again is a four horsemen thing. It's easy to remember Arn and Tully as tag champs, but it wasn't just Arn and Tully from the four horsemen that won tag titles. You could put any two members of the four horsemen together and have them a believable threat for the tag team titles, and it made the tag team titles important. And tonight it felt like the Undisputed Era versus Mustache Mountain was an important match. And you always open a card with a really good match. And this was an excellent match. I genuinely didn't know who was going to win. And then when Undisputed Era won at the end, I liked the ending. Which meant moving on to the next match, Velveteen Dream versus EC3. I have never been a huge EC3 supporter. Back to when he was Derek Bateman in NXT, I thought he was okay. I didn't see a megastar. Uh, Velveteen Dream, I've certainly read a lot about him online. I really hadn't seen him until tonight. And uh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the gimmick. I'm impressed with the way that he pulls it off. I'm impressed that it's something that feels familiar and yet a little bit different. He's making it something that's his own, so he's not quite Rick Rude. He's not quite doing the Hulk Hogan when he puts his hand up to his ear. He's not quite ripping off anybody, so it is his own thing. And then Velveteen Dream won the match, which made me happy because I do think that there's more potential with him than I see with EC3, just personally. And it was it was a good back-and-forth match. It was a better match than I had expected to see. Um, and then Ricochet, North American title match against Adam Cole. Uh, I'd seen Ricochet once or twice. I, I hadn't really paid a whole lot of attention Uh because I knew this was a big event, I paid a lot of attention tonight. And I have to say this. Adam Cole is an amazing ring general. Um, him telling Ricochet that he wasn't special over and over again during the match was fantastic. The The entire way that that whole match was, was played was perfect. And this is where I bring in another important point. When you have announcers that make the match sound important, when you have announcers that during a match aren't talking about a different match instead. When you have announcers who make it sound like even though there's no title on the line, it's still a really big match we're watching. Like the Velveteen Dream EC3 match had been before that. Every match feels important. Announcing that's done right is amazing. And when the announcing is subpar and you get the feeling that they're just trying to get you to tweet something and post on Instagram and, hey, don't forget Facebook later... When you get the feeling that that's all the announcers are doing is trying to push social media on you to get WWE to a better score, it takes away from the experience. It takes you out of the matches. Personally, for me, it takes me way out of the matches. So, you know, tonight, when Ricochet's fighting Adam Cole, I'm into the match. I'm not hearing about everything else that's going to come up later. 
and Adam Cole, surprisingly to me, lost the match to Ricochet. And the first thing I thought was, are they ready to pull the plug on, on him in NXT and move him up to WWE's main roster? My only concern would be if they moved him up without the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, being a little bit smaller, could end up, I'm not going to say 205 Live, I would hope that he wouldn't end up there, but they do seem to be trying to beef up the 205 Live show a little bit. And yet, the the Cruiserweight title is still being defended on the pre-show tomorrow, so they really clearly know that it's not over with the fans, and they don't really care either. Which is too bad, because the Cruiserweights are some of the best wrestlers they have, and they do all kinds of fun, fancy little moves that your mainstream big guys can't do. And it does remind me somewhat of the old WCW, where the Cruiserweights were fun, and the Cruiserweights would get people to watch, but they weren't allowed to get anywhere near a major title. Because of their weight, they were viewed as not being a credible threat, and that, that hurt them in the long run, and those guys ended up leaving to go to WWE, and it was part of the reason that WCW lost the Monday Night War. That they, they treated certain guys like, well, you yeah, you're good, and yeah, the crowd likes you, but we don't view you as being credible. Our main eventers are clearly better than you are, and it rubs certain guys the wrong way. So, when I see Adam Cole losing, I'm hoping that uh, this is the start of a, a, a nice long feud between him and Ricochet. Because the other thing that NXT does so much better than what I've seen on Raw or SmackDown lately is the long burn. What what has happened to the really good long burn? I'm not talking about Roman Reigns and, and Brock fighting each other every six months or however long, or three times in the last six months. I'm, I'm not talking about that and where there's all this disjointed stuff in between. It's not a continuous feud. Uh, NXT has some amazing stuff. And their feuds are a big selling point to the show. If there had been no title on the line between Ricochet and Adam Cole, I still would have loved the match just as much. Uh, Ricochet's finisher is kind of fantastic. Adam Cole is amazing, as I said. I, I see big things in their future. Um, Kerry Sane then goes up against Shayna Baszler. And this is... This is where I was genuinely surprised. Now, to me, Shayna Baszler, over the last few months... Um, when I've seen her, and again, I just got the got the channel back. The last time I had it, she was fighting with Ember Moon. She was trying to get the title from Ember. I knew she was going to get the title from Ember Moon because I knew Ember Moon was going to get put on the main roster so she can get buried and forgotten. And uh, I, I can tell that they're building up Shayna, and where I think they're going with this is I think Shayna will end up challenging Ronda. I think when Ronda gets the title next, I think either Shayna will come out as a new um, enforcer for Alexa Bliss, or she'll come out on her own right and, and challenge Ronda for the title when Ronda wins it, whether it's tomorrow or later, whenever that happens. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's tricky because once you get into all these UFC people fighting each other, then you're kind of going, well, wait, these guys are UFC fighters. Shouldn't they just do a shoot fight? Because they know how to fight, fight. So it's it's one of those things. It's sort of like how I've explained that I can't watch UFC. Because if I watch UFC, I can't watch wrestling. Because then when you watch UFC and then you watch wrestling, you go, there's an opening here, there's an opening there. That clearly, that and you, you get into the strategies and you realize none of it works and you just can't watch it. So, you know, personally, when I see Kari Sane win that match tonight, first off, Kari looked fantastic. And, and Kari's going to end up being a big star on the main roster, too. I, I hope they give her a chance. Her English seems to be okay, but again, it's a thick accent, and we know that Kevin Dunn is not a fan of putting over wrestlers who have thick accents. Thanks for Becky Lynch never winning anything. I'm, I'm going to lose it tomorrow when I when I do the, the WrestleMania, or WrestleMania, the, uh, the SummerSlam stream, and then after, when I do a review of it, I'm not going to be in a good mood. Because I'm, I'm guessing already that Becky's going to lose. Because it's just what happens every time. And as soon as Charlotte's in the match, I'm like, alright, so Charlotte's probably going to win it. Anyways, Kari Sane wins a match over Shayna Baszler. That was genuinely surprising to me. Absolutely loved the finish. Very um, interesting way of finishing the match. I thought that counter to finish the match was a lot of fun. And again, I think Kari has a bright future, hopefully over on Raw. And I could see her putting on some some fantastic matches with a, a Bailey or a Sasha if they're given the chance to do it. When I watch 
matches with women in NXT, and then I watch them on Raw or SmackDown. There's something that's similar, and it happens with men too. They don't get the time to tell the story in the ring. Or when they do, there's three commercial breaks during it. So it's it's really frustrating watching it because every time the match starts getting interesting, they go to rest holds because they know they're going to commercial. And then you come back and, oh, well, you were gone. Well, you know, during the commercial break. And it, it takes you out of the moment because, again, you imagine during a hockey game or football or whatever that as the play is going on, they go to commercial. But you notice that nobody ever scores when they go to commercial. Nothing ever really happens of consequence during the game. They don't stop the game. But nothing of consequence ever happens. So with wrestling, when they go to commercial and nothing of consequence is going to happen during commercial, it makes it hard to get back into the match when they come back from the break. That's my personal experience. And it's it's frustrating watching matches that when they do tend to be a little bit longer, have to have all these commercial breaks in the middle. Um, and, and they didn't used to do that. So when people say, well, no, WWE has to do that, they didn't used to. There used to be a time when um, and I remember JR saying, we've used up all of our commercial breaks. You will see no more commercials from this point on. You will see this entire match. And that was a big selling point. They don't really do that anymore. They don't. And I, I'm not sure why. I don't know if it has to do with sponsors and channels and all this other stuff. I know there's other uh, factors with that. But it, it does take you out of the moment. Anyways. The big match of the night. Tommaso Ciampa retains over Johnny Gargano. I remember the first time that I saw DIY the tag team and, and they'd been these these independent darlings. I didn't really see it. I, I didn't. I thought they were good workers. I thought they had, yeah, there's good chemistry in the ring, but eh, I, I was not floored by them. And over the last year, whenever I've seen them, I've become more and more vested in whatever's going on with them. Um, and, and tonight... They hit it out of the park. I haven't seen a, a last man standing match that I have felt that vested in in a long time. I think the last one I saw that I felt that way about was, and I want to say it was The Rock and Mankind. And that was kind of a famous one, of course, where The Rock kind of crossed the line. Uh, Mick Foley's uh, family was at ringside. His kids got upset because they really thought their dad was getting hurt. And he had to have them backstage and say, hey, you know, dad's okay. And I know that that really changed things for Mick that night. What I saw with, with Champa and Gargano tonight, there were a lot of moments that I said, oh, don't do that, don't do that. And then they would do it, and I'm like, oh, God, you guys are, this is so dangerous. Uh, there was the fall through the tables at ringside where I was concerned, with the table one table being upside down. I had some concerns there. There was the concern where um, Champa's burying Johnny Gargano under equipment at ringside, and Johnny should have blocked uh, some of it coming down on him, and he didn't. And it clocked him right in the side of the head. So there was stuff that I was really wincing when I saw it. And uh, there was DDTs and stuff like that that really made me nervous. Because uh, I've, I've you know, heard nightmare stories from Jake the Snake Roberts about if a DDT is performed and your opponent isn't blocking for it, you know, he talked about Ricky Steamboat with that. Now Ricky didn't block it on the floor the one time and knocked him. So he was knocked right out. So I get nervous with that. And then the finish... The finish was fantastic, and I will say this too. That was beautiful because we knew Aleister Black wasn't in the match. And I kept waiting for Aleister Black to come out and screw over Johnny. As soon as Tommaso Ciampa was handcuffed, and they're like, oh, now Ciampa can't stand up, I went, is this where Aleister's going to come out and he's going to screw Johnny over? Is he going to come out and put Johnny on the floor and he's going to beat the living hell out of him? And Johnny's going to be the one that can't answer the 10 count. And then Alistair's also screwed Johnny over the way that Johnny screwed him over. And that didn't happen. Uh, Johnny did it to himself. And that was really nerve-wracking. Now, they talk on the, the, the replay, they show how his knee hits. It, it wasn't the knee impact that made me nervous. It was the way he he, he rolls. So he, he, he knees Champa in the side of the head. And then he rolls as he's going onto the other table where there's equipment. And that equipment doesn't give so this is where when people say well wrestling's fake who cares yes absolutely it's there's a stage there's a script but there are moments in that script that are really dangerous if they're not executed properly what i saw tonight was tomasa champa and johnny gargano absolutely trust each other 100 percent 
There were moves that were performed there that if, if wrestlers didn't completely trust one another, they don't happen. Uh, it was it was intense. And the way that Champa retains, and better yet, Champa begs Johnny to stop. So Johnny's beating the hell out of him while he's handcuffed, and he's saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Johnny. And he's very convincing when saying it. And it, it felt like a genuine moment. And what got me in that moment was, you can turn Champa into the good guy and Gargano into the bad guy in that very moment. And they can use that going forward to turn Gargano, because obviously the storyline is this. Alistair Black is in a triple threat match with Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa for the NXT title. Black gets attacked backstage. Nobody knows who did it. It's Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano wants a one-on-one -on -one match against Ciampa. He doesn't want Black in the match. He wants Ciampa for himself. So, clearly, Gargano's the one that attacked Black. That's the only thing, storyline-wise, that works. That's why I kept waiting for Black to come out and attack Gargano, and then he could come out on next week's NXT and say, what I did, I did because he attacked me backstage. You know, I wasn't good to go for the match, but I didn't care. I went out and beat him up anyways. So that's kind of what I was waiting for. But again, if they're going to do the double switch, where Champa ends up being the anti-hero, doesn't have to be a good guy. He can just be the anti-hero and fight everybody. And you have Gargano just... Because he's he's snapping, so he's he's been mentally broken by the fact he can't get over that hump. You know, eventually, he snaps, goes a little too far, and he's he's technically the bad guy now. So that's that's what I'm kind of waiting for. That's where I I think it will eventually end up. But tonight's show reminded me why I sometimes love wrestling. There are moments where I am absolutely fixated on what's going on, and I love every minute of it. And that event tonight, that's it. You have one, two, three, four, you have five matches over a period of two and a half hours. There was no talking. There were too many commercials. There are there are still commercials during in-between matches. It drives me nuts, because it adds about 15 to 20 minutes to the show, and it really doesn't need to be there. We're already watching. We're going to be watching tomorrow, too. You don't need to sell us again. But it's, it's kind of what they do. They sell you even while you're watching, which is really weird. I, it, 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 it's a strange, strange thing. But anyways, uh, I, I don't know how SummerSlam meets up with this and, and exceeds it. SummerSlam is a bloated show where you have, it's rumored it's going to be a four-hour show, and then you've got a two-hour pre-show or a three-hour pre- two hour, I think it's two-hour pre-show, so it's six hours. It's exhausting. This this show was two and a half, and it had everything, which brings up the other uh, the other point that I don't like to make, which is I still think WWE has too many wrestlers. I don't think there's enough time, and I think because there's not enough time to tell all these stories, there's also too much time not telling the stories in the ring, and and just all the if you actually time out how much of Raw and SmackDown actually features a wrestling match. And how much features backstage interviews, in-ring interviews, promos, commercials, and then you've got, after a commercial break, you come back to uh, your pal Scott Stanford, who's going to tell you where the events are near you. And that goes on for, you know, another probably another five or six minutes of the show is, is spent telling you where to buy tickets for the next wrestle, wrestling show near you. It, it, it gets to be a bit much. It does. And the, the pay-per-views being longer and longer. I'm, I'm all for getting as many people a payday as possible, but I, I just wonder if, if there's going to be a point where WWE says, we, we need to trim things down. We need to make this work. It, it's hard to... It is hard to have a card like this if you're trying to get 35 people a, a payday for a pay-per-view. This card was perfect. I'm not kidding you. This was the perfect card. And and I don't look at, at SummerSlam tomorrow and see a per perfect card. I just don't. This this was fantastic. And the booking was amazing. The setup was amazing for each match. And the payoff was awesome. And none of these matches are ones that if, if the feud continues past tonight, there's none of them I'm going to go, oh, seriously, they're still fighting? 
It doesn't happen in NXT because there's always something that changes. There's always a, a storyline advance. And sometimes Raw and SmackDown misses that. So that's that's my issue. Like, like for instance, tomorrow night you've got Miz and Daniel Bryan. That has been a storyline that's been fantastic. But while it's been this slow burn that's gone on for a long time, if Daniel Bryan doesn't get cleared to wrestle, it's just another fight between a general manager and and a wrestler, which has been going on for decades. One last point I want to make. This entire card tonight didn't feature William Regal other than the fact that he made this a last man standing match for the title because of what happened with Aleister Black. He didn't feature in anything else. He didn't screw anybody out of a title. He didn't favor anybody to win a title. He didn't come out at any point during tonight and distract from a match. He didn't change a match. Uh, there weren't run-ins. There wasn't any kind of screw job finishes. It was pure wrestling. The ang the, the storyline that, that Raw and SmackDown push every week, it seems like every week it is a an authority figure versus a wrestler. And this 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 idea that certain authority figures and wrestlers and you just they can't get along and it's like it's been going on for decades. Stop. It needs to stop. It, it's ser and I'm, I, I don't know how much more serious I can be other than this whole, like, when I heard, you know, Baron Corbin was going to be Constable Corbin, and he's there for Stephanie to oversee Kurt, Kurt Angle. Why? Why are we still doing this angle for almost 20 years? Almost 20 years of this same angle. It starts, honestly, before WrestleMania 17 with Vince McMahon, it starts after Bret, Bret Hart leaves the company and he says, Bret screwed Bret. And from that day until now, we've had to deal with authority figures being jerks and screwing people out of titles and yada, yada, yada. And they, they, they never completely drop it. And they really should. Let the wrestlers tell the story. Let the matches speak for themselves. There doesn't need to be an authority figure stepping in at all. This was perfect. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below if you watch the show um, and, and where you think this, this kind of stuff might be going and which which wrestlers that are, are on the show in, in NXT right now we're going to be talking about on the main roster next year as megastars. And I have to say, Ciampa, or Ciampa and Gargano, they really tore the house down tonight, almost literally, when they're ripping the ring apart and tearing apart all this equipment and breaking tables. Just, that's, 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 that's the thing. Leave it all out there. So, anyways, there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And I will talk to you guys again soon.